Hey everybody, this is Stephanie. Thanks for tuning in. I am doing a 12 by 12 layout. I'm going to be documenting these photos. It is the Valentine's that just passed. I grabbed out this paper pad as well as this cut file, which is uh, Cut to You by, uh, by Gwen. And initially I thought I would be doing the traditional form of Valentine's Day with this beautiful collection by uh, Echo Park. Uh, but if, when in life, especially when you're a parent, you tend to have to pivot quite a bit. And this day and this holiday is no different. We have kids, so we never we didn't really make any plans. But as the day ar arrived, I was a bit bummed. I wanted to do something. It's been so long since my husband and I have gone out. We've done lunch dates, but we have our toddler with us. So I was kind of bummed, you know. And finding a setter during Valentine's Day, yeah. <laughs> Slim to none. We decided to go out to get a bite to eat, and when we found a place to eat, we also noticed this place called The Empire, which is basically a really big indoor playground. And we decided to go for it. Instead of trying to find a place and struggle with our toddler, we decided to just embrace our crazy life right now. And I'm so grateful for it. I'm so happy that I didn't stay bummed and didn't try to force a traditional Valentine's Day. I took it in stride. I was like, yeah, let's do this. This is what I want to do. I, I want them. Yeah, I, I loved it. <laughs> I loved hearing their giggles and their laughs and their just that pure fun on their face. Oh, it was so worth it. And as I think about this, I... I no, all too soon I'm going to be getting those quiet romantic dinners with my husband because they they leave our nest and I'm going to end up be missing them. So why force and why rush those these moments right now? This is how our life is right now. So it just made sense to have this cup out because I am embracing our crazy life right now. I love our crazy life. So I had to pick out my pattern papers. I went ahead and trimmed the editing so that you didn't have to see me do that process. Man, I am officially into the surgery of scrapbooking. <laughs> that took some time, but I am I was so worth it. So I went into the paper hat to find a background paper. I went with this small design of plus signs really small and in muted colors of this pale pink and green and i think brown i am going to gesso this pattern paper in the background but just around where i have the cut foul heart and that's just so that way i can watercolor some uh, spun sugar tim holtz um, spray on instead of leaving it as sprays i do smear it around kind of like a smushing technique just to add some pink. The reason why I did that is I wanted to help the cut file heart portion to pop out and like off the background to give it some more dimension. For the most part, I think I got that look achieved. I could have went with a darker pink or added in more of that pink color, but I didn't want it to dominate my spread since I already have busy photos in a bold title. I just wanted to bring in some more of that pink, but not have it dominate the page. The beauty of placing gesso on your background is that so that way the color doesn't seep through and you're able to move that color around. I went ahead and grabbed out this big board here. It's actually from a chocolate box, a really huge one my husband had purchased for me last year. Since we have kids, he knew they were going to take quite a few. So um, it's been a year now and I'm still using it as my mixed media box. <laughs> It does the job. It's perfect. So I'm adding in my pink here and I'm smushing it. And you can see here it's very muted. It doesn't really give a big pop, which is what I was looking for. So I'm adding in a couple more splashes here and I do um, saturate a little bit or kind of tone it down by adding in some squirts of my water as well. You can see here I'm blending in so that way it doesn't show up so bright. I just want that subtle look of pink here. And I do have a little bit of a blue since that wrapper that I used to smush actually had some residue of a blue from a previous watercolor background I made. Thankfully, you can see it here as the title covers up the most part, most of it. So I pull in the Ellie Studio Kit for the February that just released. And I'm grabbing out some die cuts to see how I want to do this layout. Grabbing out this cut file, 
I feel like it dominated the spread, so I kind of struggled on how to embellish it any further. Honestly, at this point, you can totally leave it right like this, and it would be fine since the cut file kind of really dominates the spread. But I wanted to place in some die cuts to help finish off this layout and kind of bring more color uh, um, onto the right side, so just to help to balance everything. I do mat my photos with a very thin uh, line for, of white cardstock just to help close them in and kind of keep them cohesive. As I go in further into this spread, I start to realize that I can pull in colors from the left side to the right side. So as you can see, the second photo kind of aligns perfectly with the second word of my title, the R. So I'm going to be placing red on that second photo. And the same thing for the first photo, I'm going to be placing purple, and then that third photo with the yellow is going to be with the yellow title. So I'm going to be looking into my stash to bring in some yellow sentiments and um, yellow-based embellishments. So this is where I start to form this idea to pull in more colors that coordinate in a horizontal line. And then since I don't have a photo that goes along with the blue, I just place in some die cuts to finish it off. Throughout the process, I do try to do a diagonal kind of a diagonal line at the bottom, and that doesn't stay. I think I struggle more because I'm trying to get this done during the weekend, and with my kids home and my husband home, yeah, I only had like 10 to 15 minutes um, time, so some of the stuff doesn't get recorded just because I'm in a time crunch, and this layout kept bugging me and needed to be created. The struggle is for all guys. <laughs> so you can see that diagonal starting to form there at the bottom portion. And like I said, that does not stay, nor does that embellishment near the black and white photo. I don't know why I try to bring in a new color toward the end of this layout. I think I had left it there initially and come back. It does get removed though. So they move forward here. I'm adding more of the embellishments with my their coordinating little clusters with each photo. So I go with purple on the top, Red is the second photo, and then the third photo is going to have yellow, and the bottom portion with the word life in my title is going to have blue, and if you notice the word life, it's not fully cut completely. There's looks like there's two eyes. Yes, I did not even realize until the very end when I start taking pictures, and you'll see that in the still pictures, I did correct that. Oopsie. Newbie cut filer. <laughs> is, that the, is that a word? I don't know. I guess I can say I'm exposed to the surgery of scrapbooking. So if you are a seasoned use user of cut files, comment down below and let me know if you noticed that before mentioning it on my voiceover. All right, here are my clusters. Here is the completed layout. I hope you got inspired in some way. As always, thanks for watching. And if you liked this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.